Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to The Crafty Corner. This week, over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue, we are creating to the theme of Cut It Out. So, that means I'm going to be featuring some of the new Tim Holtz Sizzix products. Specifically, we're going to be playing with the new set Artsy Leaves, and we're going to be playing with the Tapestry Embossing Folder. Also, we're going to be pulling in a few old favorite classics, such as Myron. So today we're going to cut it out. If you'd like to see the entire supply list, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. So today is exciting. Not only do we have a new theme over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue, but I got my hands on the new Halloween distress colors and these colors are absolutely fantastic i love the names i love the color and if you are a fan of sparkle then i think you will love the sparkle just as much as i do so for the new tim holtz ranger distress seasonal halloween colors we have got mold cider unraveled specimen Phantom Mist, Ominous Twilight, and Fallen Acorn. All gorgeous colors. So I've got the Distress Mica Spray Stains and we've got the Distress Crayons. Let's go ahead and give these a quick swatch before we dive into today's project. I'm going to start by swatching the crayons out on some black paper and then we'll pull in a scrap of mixed media to swatch them on as well. Alright, let me just grab a mixed media tag. There we go. We can do a side by side. So we've got mold cider right here. Hmm. That is such a lovely orange. And it's very vivid. Even if we're working on the mixed media, we've got the effect on the black and on the mixed media. Looks pretty good. Now We'll pull in Unraveled. Again, this is kind of a nice gold. Makes me think of a moon on Halloween. Then we've got Specimen. That's got a very reptilian feel to it. I'm thinking like a crocodile or maybe even a dragon. Then we've got Phantom Mist. Very mysterious. I think Phantom Mist might be one of my new favorites. And then of course we've got ominous twilight the name on that one the name is my favorite but the color is so good it's got like hints of villainous potion in it okay and then we've got fallen acorn a lovely brown it's a good dark brown i really like that all right let's just see what we can do we'll just get the little smudge not bad So that would be the new Distress Crayons. Now, on these same cards, we're also going to take a look at the new Distress Mica Spray Stains. So I took the spray stains and I decanted them into some of these smaller bottles. Tim had a great little video on this, on decanting the spray stains from one spot to another. And the nice thing is a teeny tiny dot of this is going to have a whole lot of colorful impact. So just off to the side, I'm going to put down a teeny, teeny, tiny drop, and I'll then swatch it onto the page. And to do that, of course, we'll be pulling in a water brush. So I'm just taking a little bit of that, just put that right there, and as you can see, very, very vibrant. All right, and let's go for some Unraveled. And there's a mixing ball in there that gives us ability to do a little shake and then just a teeny little bit here and then mm, and check out that color it's a good color yeah so we're not going to see too much on black paper with this there's going to be a little bit of a hint of color but not overly spectacular if you want to put stuff on darker paper use the crayons the crayons are going to show up beautifully 
now some specimen. Put a little bit right here. That is such a dark color. It's it's almost got black black undertones. I don't know. This is this is neat. Okay. So next we've got um uh get the list. Add a little bit of that here. Mm. Definitely a very pretty color. But I think I'm gonna got a little bit of the specimen in that. There we go. There. That is this really neat silvery blue. Very cool. A little bit of ominous twilight. Mm. That purple is just, it's so rich. I love that. Okay, and last color we've got Fallen Acorn. Just put a little bit of that here. Mm, there we go. Nice rich brown. Okay, so these would be the new colors of the seasonal Tim Holtz Ranger Distress line. Now, well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the dyes and embossing folders. So Sizzix just had a release and there's some fantastic things out there and this is going to fit in well with our theme cut it out we're going to be featuring the embossing folder this is the reptile and we're also going to be playing with some of the new leaves these are gorgeous and this would be artsy leaves so these are the two new things that we're going to be using from Sizzix today and then we're going to pull in a couple of favorites we've got this guy Myron from last year absolutely love him he is quite the character and I'm thinking paired with this reptile folder, he's going to get some really cool texture. And I decided to go the route of a magical birthday card. So we're going to also incorporate items from Celebrate Colorize. So let's go ahead and get started. For Myron, he comes in quite a few layers. So the first thing that we're going to need to do will be to make some backgrounds that we'll be able to die cut and work through the layers. Myron has this oh, one, two, three, three layers of green that we'll need to work with. So we're definitely going to be using specimen, but at the same time, I'm going to be pulling in a couple of colors from previous years. We're going to be pulling in Wicked Elixir and Holly Branch. These are going to be some great colors for Myron. All right, give everything a good shake. For our substrate today, we're going to be using some of the Distress Tim Holtz Ranger watercolor paper. So we're gonna go ahead and put this part of fast four. We're just going to be doing some basic spritzing with some water and then letting the Distress Mica spray stain work its magic. And of course, drying in between each layer with the Ranger heat tool. And here are our backgrounds that we're going to be using for die cutting. This would be our super dark layer that was using specimen and a dash of holly branch. Then we have holly branch and a little bit of elixir. And then this is our lightest level with just wicked elixir. Now, while I was making the backgrounds, I decided I also would make the actual background for the card as well. So here I used a combination of ominous twilight and phantom mist 
So the next thing that we're going to do will be to take these pieces and we are going to die cut them and emboss them. I'm not sure which is going to work better, embossing first or die cutting first. So I'm going to try both. Okay, so I'm going to head on over to the Vagabond and we'll be right back with some die cuts. Okay, now that we have Myron all assembled, time to add a few finishing touches. So I just want to darken up the texture along here on his scales, and that is going to give a great look. A little bit more vintage, a little bit more texture, all very good things. So just adding a dash of walnut stained crayon here and there, and then smudging it out. Okay, that didn't need too much extra. Good. So we're going to go ahead and set Myron aside. This is our main focal point and he is definitely looking pretty darn good. Next, we're going to be assembling some of the new artsy leaves. I absolutely love this new die set. There are so many different fun shapes and little embellishments to add to the leaves. So let's go ahead. We're going to just pull these in and we're going to start assembling these leaves. I've already pre die cut these out of some scraps that I had. We got a little bit of... Um, Distress glaze here with some distress ink. We got some distress mica spray stain. And for the accent pieces, I'm going to be using a bit of metallic gold. So let's just go ahead and get these assembled and then we can move on to the next portion of our card. Now, for these little filament sections, I have already added some double stick tape to the back of these. I find that makes assembly so much easier and streamlined when you're trying to assemble multiple elements. One thing I love even more is just sitting down and die cutting many, many leaves. I actually did that, but I saved these aside so that we could assemble them on camera. It's just some nights when you're a little bit tired and you're not quite sure what to do, there's nothing better than diving into the scrap pile and creating die cuts. Because then, when you do have all that creative mojo going, it's easy to just grab pieces and create. Okay. So I've got two more leaves, got this little piece here. We'll go ahead and stick that down. Oh, not quite centered, we'll just take that and readjust. There we go, not bad. And one more. And we'll just stick that right on here. So when I was die cutting all of these leaves out, we also die cut all of these. We've got many, many leaves to choose from. So that's just one thing that you can do with all of your scraps on days when the creativity is not flowing as much as you like. Die cut things. Save things in a box. That way when you need leaves or let's say Halloween characters, then you've got a whole pile of stuff ready to go and to play with. And just when you're looking for inspiration, you can go back to those die cuts and just go, wow, I've got so many options. And can also remind you of some of the tips and tricks that you have learned in the past. All right, let's go ahead and start assembling this card featuring Myron. So we're just going to bring Myron back and I'm going to bring in my background pieces next. For the background pieces, we had done a distress ink background. And then we also did a little bit of emboss. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side and... There we go, here is our embossing, and this is with the new embossing folder. That has got some really great detail. So for this, all I did was ink the inside of an embossing folder. Like any embossing folder, if you open it up, you can see that there's a raised edge, and all you do is ink over the top, close the folder, and run it through the machine, and then you can get some of that ink to transfer onto the paper, and that gave us a really fun spooky wallpaper type background. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to trim this down a bit. Let's see, we're obviously starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch base and I want to take away mm, only a quarter of an inch. So 
let's see. Oh, that's gonna end up being a half inch. So that should be pretty easy. Oops. Chop and chop. Okay, let's see how that is. Pretty good, I'm happy with that. So if we started at five and a half, this is now approximately five inches by three and three fourths. And then we're gonna take this one and this one we're going to shrink down even more. And I've already got, oh, I think I wanna adjust my markings on this. So I'm just gonna eyeball this one and do some pencil marks. I want a good border going around this because we're going to be adding in our leaves. Okay, I think here and about there. Okay, so we're gonna have some cutoffs. That's okay. And the background that we're slicing up right now, this one was made with some of the brand new Distress Mica spray stains. Specifically, we had a bunch of Phantom Mist and some Ominous Twilight. Probably my two new favorite colors from the newest seasonal collection. Okay. So we're going to need some foam squares. I think I want to pop this up a little bit. Let's go with some of the smaller ones. I've got a lot of those. And I've got the low profile ones. Perfect. Okay, so we're just going to take this and that first layer, I'm going to pop that up a little bit. Not a lot. I'm using some of the low profile foam squares and that'll just give us a little bit of a lift. Myron's going to get the full lift with the thicker squares. Okay, so we're just going to quickly pop these on here and then we can put our layered base together. I love doing bases that have lots of different interesting features going on with them, like doing a distressed layer, a shiny layer, and then a textured layer. Just brings more visual interest to card backgrounds. Okay. There we go. Now let's layer that up carefully. All right. Oh, not quite. I don't know why, but I always have the hardest time lining things up. I definitely prefer to eyeball these, but it's still a little bit challenging. And then that's gonna go here. But before we put that down, we're going to add our leaves around the edge. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of place these and then we will see about trimming them. Okay, let's see. That can go here. Ooh, this one look good over here. And then that one. So we're gonna do something like that. This is going to cover the middle and I can just kind of readjust the leaves before I commit to gluing them down and we'll trim off the bits of excess. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Go ahead and use some collage medium. We'll let that dry and then I'll give it a trim. So with this week's challenge, it was cut it out. So I'm trying to use as many different die cuts as possible, but I really wanted to feature the leaves from the new Sizzix set. Oh, this one's already pre-adhesed. Great, I'll take that and stick it down as it is. Okay, oh, that's adhesed too. I forgot that I already had double-sided tape on a few of these, not all, but some. And that is definitely useful when trying to assemble things quickly. Absolutely love using the double-sided adhesive. Okay, that can go there. Next, this one. I think something like that should work. Oh, more double-sided stick, I like it. And that will go here. All right. And now let's see how this looks. Ooh, definitely liking that. Now the big question is, do I want another pop-up layer? And the answer is yes, yes I do. So go for the larger foam squares this time, the ones that have a little bit more lift to them. 
Oh, something about dimensional lift. I like it. Okay, a couple of pieces. Get rid of our scraps. Very good. And, ooh, which side up? This side? How about that side? Oh, no, that side. I like that side better. And carefully lining this up. Good. Not bad. So now I'm just going to go in with the scissors and carefully trim off the little bit of extra leaf bits. So I'm just carefully snipping the edges of that so we don't have any overhang. Eek. Not bad. All right, be back in a moment after I finish trimming off the little other leafy bits. Okay, leafy bits are now trimmed. I am loving this card base with a little bit of metallic to tie in around the edges. Oh, absolutely fun. Okay, time to add the main star of the show, which would be Myron in this case. So we'll go ahead and attach him to the card next. I've got some more foam squares. Just stick those on him and we'll be good. All right. So since we're doing a themed birthday card, I also am going to want to add a cake. And for the cake, we're going to be pulling in the Colorize die set party time. So let's go ahead and get Myron stuck down and then we can start constructing a cake. Okay, that is good. So we're just gonna put the cake right in front of him and then I'll figure out something with text. Okay. So we'll slide Myron out of the way for the moment. Put the cap back on the glue, put the foam squares away and pull in our die cuts. So for the die cuts, I'm going to be coloring them with the Distress Re inkers, and that'll give me a good foundation to create off of. So here are our die cuts. We've got our re inkers, and of course, I have one of the Tim Holtz Ranger water brushes. So let's go ahead and put this on fast forward as we add some color to this cake. All right, we've got most of the birthday cake assembled, so let's go ahead and stick this right onto our card. I did pop up part of the back with some foam squares because Myron is offset. I'm just gonna stick this right there. And now the birthday candles. So I'm just gonna take these. I'm going to kind of stick them sort of behind the cake. There we go. And one more, and then we add the little flames. Okay. There we go. The flames are pretty darn small, so I'm trying to be careful. Another there, and one more. All right. There we go, we've got Myron and the birthday cake, and now we just need a sentiment. And I think I will just use this little scrap and put a sentiment right along here. 
So I'm just going to take my scissors and we're going to make this into a little banner. I'm just cutting a small triangle from each side, just like that. Do the same to the other side. Okay. Pretty good. And I believe I'm going to actually hand letter this one today because I don't think I can squeeze on the sentiment with the die cuts that I was thinking about. So we're just going to write in Hoppy Birthday. Not bad. All right, now a couple more foam squares and this card will be complete. Just like that. Take the backings off. Remove the scrap. And just making certain we're centered. Pretty good. And there we go. This is our finished card while we were playing to the theme of Cut It Out. So we've been playing to the theme of Cut It Out and we have definitely been cutting things out, whether it's been by hand using scissors or using many different Sizzix Tim Holtz dies. And we have been able to pull in the die sets Myron, Artsy Leaf, Celebrate, Colorize. In addition to that, we also pulled in two of the new embossing folders. We have the wallpaper embossing folder in the background. And then for Myron, we were able to run the parts and pieces for Myron through the reptile folder to get this really cool bumpy texture. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for all of the fun over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue. And until next time, happy crafting.